Amen. You can be seated. You know, I woke up this morning and met someone. Mercy met me this morning. It greeted me this morning and told me that I get a brand new start. Isn't that beautiful? God's mercy is renewed every day. And yesterday is gone. And everything in yesterday, all my failures, all my faults, all that jazz, all my inconsistencies, my unbelief, all that stuff is gone. Just, just totally, totally erased. Isn't that beautiful? Because mercy is meeting me each and every morning. And it tells me that today is a brand new day. It's filled with brand new possibilities. It's filled with brand new potential. There are things that God will show me today that I did not know. If I'll open up my heart to him, amen. Why don't you just say this with me? Say, today is a brand new day. Say it at home too. I know when you're watching TV or you're watching your screen or you're watching your phone, you don't feel like you need to say these things, but I want to encourage you. Say this stuff out loud. Say, today is a brand new day. I get a brand new start. I get a brand new start. What does that mean? It means that no good thing will be withheld from you. That's what God says. The, the scripture is clear to teach us that no good thing will God withhold from you. And he will keep you sheltered in his mighty loving arms. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Now, as you guys know, I, I love uh, law enforcement. We had law enforcement here uh, about a month ago. And uh, we talked with them about some of the things they're facing. Um, but I, I do, I have a tremendous respect for uh, our law enforcement, and I love those uh, who are in public service, those who are first responders, and those who wear the uniform in our military, several of which b- belong to this particular church. But I, I, love, I love all this, those who serve in our military here in America and, of course, overseas. Without them, this country, as we know it, This freedom that we all enjoy would soon diminish and fall apart. Particularly, I respect, um, what I respect about those those first responders is when things get tough, when when things begin to uh, uh, fall apart, when all hell begins to break loose and it seems like chaos is the order of the day and things begin to unravel, these guys, they don't run away. No, they step up and act to the best of their ability, depending upon their training and depending upon what they know. They depend on what they know. Say this with me, depend on what you know. Regardless of the state of affairs or whatever the situation may be, what gets them through very, very tough circumstances is what they know. They rely and they turn to what they know. They turn to those things in order to turn things around. In 2 Corinthians, Paul talks about how we handle and how we overcome unexpected problems in our lives. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7, he says, notice this, our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in God's comfort. Our hope is firm because we know. Say that with me. Our hope is firm because we know. Here's the point that Paul's making. Paul's telling the Corinthians that his hope is firm because of what he knows. And the fact is, what we know is the very thing that gets us through very difficult times that we often face in this world and especially Today, what we know is the antidote to overcoming all the fear of the unknown. Amen. You and I, as Christians, we take our stand, and our hope is strong and firm based upon what we know. Faith and determination and comfort spring out of what we know. For example, the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, right, in Psalms. It says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. In other words, what I'm dealing with right now is temporary. 
God is turning things around. It may look bleak right now. It may look dark right now. I may be afraid right now. I may have anxiety in my heart right now. I may be dealing with fear right now. Things may be seeming like it's falling apart around me. Weeping may endure for the night. But let me tell you what. I know something. Joy is coming in the morning. Somebody say amen. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed out begging bread. Boy, that's, that's a good thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I mean, David is a trustworthy guy. He's known God a long time and he'd been on the earth for a while and he's saying, you know what, guys? Listen, don't panic. Don't, don't, don't get your, your hair in a bunch, Right? He said, listen, I have never, ever in my lifetime ever seen God forsake the righteous. It's never happened. I've never seen his seed, God's seed, out begging for bread. Why? Because God is a good provider. And so when times are lean or when we're tempted to worry, we can lean on this very promise of God. Amen. Based upon what we know. And when we... When we trust and, and have confidence in him, this confidence settles us on the inside. In times when we feel like the odds are stacked against us and we're feeling like we're being pressured on all sides, what we know will get us through because we know that no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. Amen. Amen. Say amen to that. You say amen at home. Wake up, bless God. Amen. Say amen to that. No weapon formed against us will ever prosper. And so when we're feeling weak in our bodies or we're feeling sick and we're concerned about our health, we're concerned about, you know, the quality of our future, we can rest in what we know because we know this. We know that God said that he sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. Aren't you glad that the word of God was made flesh? Jesus Christ came into the earth. Amen. And the Bible says by his stripes we are healed. And the Bible says he sent his word to heal them. Jesus is our healer. He is all that we need. And he will deliver us from any work of the enemy. And so when we're feeling under assault and things and people you know, just seem to be taking advantage of us. What we know about God's faithfulness will actually guide our steps and our way forward. And we will abide under the shadow of the Almighty as he protects us. Paul says this in Second Thessalonians. He says, the Lord is faithful. Say that with me. The Lord is faithful. And he will strengthen you and protect you from who? The evil one. God's got you. Say it out loud. God's got me. <laughs> yeah. Amen. He has you right in the palm of his hand. You see, it's not what we don't know that elevates our life. It's what we do know that elevates us and secures us. What we know is the very thing that will get us through times of uncertainty in our lives and tremendous difficulty that we experience. What we know becomes the very It becomes the very substance of our faith. You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's it's a tangible material that we have, or an intangible material that we have on the inside of us. It's something that, that, that becomes real. It becomes firm. It solidifies our life. It becomes an anchor of our soul. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence, the proof, or the deep conviction that conviction that I possess what I cannot see. Amen. What we know will steady us and sustain us. It'll anchor us in the middle of the storm, no matter the crisis, no matter where we find ourselves. So today what I want to do is I want to remind you of some things that you already know. Some things that you know. I want to help you with your confidence. I want to help you with your hope. I want to help you uh, understand how important the things you know Um, are actually tools and how important they are for your lives. Amen. Go ahead and say that sounds like good stuff. You know, I I know, reminding you of the things that you know, I know today that I'm in very good company because the Apostle Paul 
re often reminded people of what they knew. He reminded the church over and over of things that they already know. In fact, he says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, he says, I plan to keep on reminding you of the things, even though, of these things, even though you already know them and are really getting along quite well. You know, some of you are getting along quite well. <laughs> Others of you aren't doing so good. You know, when you go out, out, out and, and you talk to different people or, you know, you talk to them on the phone or maybe you talk to them uh, by text or whatever, there are some people that this thing really hasn't phased much. And there are others who are being impacted and, and uh, you know, uh, you know, very deeply concerned about what's happening. And there's uh, a lot of fear on, on the inside of their hearts. And so not everyone is, is being... Um, I don't know, they're not all having the same experience, if you would, all right? Not everyone is experiencing the same thing during this particular uh, pandemic. People are being uh, impacted in different ways. Uh, even throughout the country, uh, people are being impacted different ways. But um, as you look throughout the pages of the Bible, you find that, you know, there's there's a lot of warfare going on in the mind. You, you know, the Bible clearly shows us that. And people are being impacted all the time by their thoughts and what's taking place in their thinking. And, you know, what they come, uh, what comes at them through their eye gates and their ear gates and, you know, through conversations and through the news and all that sort of thing. But as you look at, through, uh, look at the pages of the Bible, you find that getting the facts about things is vitally important. The Bible puts a lot of emphasis on knowing the facts. And so before we ever make any major decision in life, you and I need to get the facts, right? Getting the facts is a good practice in life. A lot of people go on hearsay. A lot of people go on somebody else say, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you and I, we need to have the facts because it's what you know that'll get you through. Amen? Amen. So today I want to give you some things to remember for the crazy hour in which you and I are living. And I want to give you these things in order to promote peace. How many knows we need to promote peace in this time? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, the first fact I want to give you this morning is that not everything that you hear is true. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. So for some of you, that's a real revelation. But not everything that you're hearing out there is true. And I think that should calm everybody just a little bit. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, <clears throat> excuse me, it says the gullible believe anything they're told, but the prudent sift and weigh every word. Amen. Amen. That's a good practice, right? And so uh, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, Fox, uh, CBS, and any other three-letter word, right? Everybody that you know, speaks on the Internet, those who are on social media that give you peace of your mind, those on the radio, not everybody knows what they're talking about. They don't. Many of them are speaking on behalf of either a, a political party or a corporate position. You know, there's a lot of money people behind the scenes that are pulling the strings of what's being said on television. You guys got to know that. Yeah. And so the truth is, not everybody that's talking is worth listening to. <laughs> I hope today that I'm worth your time, just a little bit of time that, <laughs> that you're going to give me this morning. So... It's very important to be selective. Don't tune out right now, all right? You shouldn't always listen to things that you just want to hear. Sometimes you need to listen to things that maybe you don't want to hear. It's very important. In fact, the sad truth is, in my view, and this is just my humble opinion, the news is really not the news anymore. It's all really become today propaganda. It has. It's sad. I, I've seen it evolve uh, over the years, which means most of the stuff that you're hearing on TV and on social media is coming to you through a very slanted lens. So please realize in this crisis that many people and politicians and specifically, you know, in, in the days ahead, they have an agenda that they're pushing in this crisis. And you know, it's sad, but this, this pandemic itself has actually become political. Yeah. 
It's, it's just so, so sad. Which means in this crisis, there are talking heads that are on television and on social media that are leveraging, you know, there are these, these people who are trying to leverage power over you to get what they want, which is just really more power. That's what it's all about. So no doubt there's going to be people out there who are going to try to take advantage over others with lies in order to get them exactly what they want for themselves. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 13, he says, everything a wise and shrewd man does, someone who has true wisdom, comes from a source of revelation knowledge. It comes from a godly source. We need to depend on godly wisdom. I don't care what you hear. I don't care, you know, what social media says. I don't care, you know, of all the positions that people have and all the stuff that they tell you. You know what? One thing that never changes is the wisdom of God. And we as God's people need to have godly wisdom that's based upon the truth. How many knows the truth never changes? Facts change all the time. But the truth never change. I mean, it's a fact I'm standing here. Now it's a fact I'm standing here. See how the facts have changed? All right, wherever I go, I'm, you know, the fact has changed. But truth never changes. The Bible says it abides forever. And so if we'll anchor ourselves to the truth and we'll get ourselves connected to the word of, of God and trust in him as our source and our resource in life, we're not going to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, right? By everybody's philosophy, by everybody's ideology. We'll, we'll have a real strong core. We'll have a, 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 an anchor that, that holds us firm in these very, very terminless times, right? Amen. Listen, when you and I face challenges in life, you know, we're not to act out of fear. We're not to act out of feelings, but out of knowledge and out of understanding. We're, we're to use our God-given sense that he gave us. Amen. The wisdom of, of the Almighty. And, and what I'm trying to tell you is, is that we're to live from, from what we know. Amen. Based upon the truth. Why? Because fear and feelings are highly unreliable and they never help. Let me show you what, what God says about getting facts, all right? He says, what a shame and yes, how stupid to decide basically anything before knowing the facts. Proverbs 18.2 says a rebel doesn't care about the facts. <laughs> I think we've seen that demonstrated, right? He didn't care about the facts. All he wants to do is yell. I mean, you can see that right now with all the crowds in our major cities. You can see it on social media. All they want to do is give you a piece of their mind. All they want to do is yell. All people want to do is tear things apart. They don't care about the facts. Right? The facts just kind of get in the way of people's agenda, for that matter. Isn't that true? But the Bible says that's foolish. In Proverbs 23, 23, it says, get the facts at any price and hold on tightly to all the good sense that you can get. <laughs> hold on tightly to that good sense. Amen? Amen. And what the Bible is saying is, is, is basically what this is yelling out of the scripture is, just place your trust in God Almighty. Put your trust in Him. And, and people who follow Jesus, we shouldn't just be people of faith. We ought to be people of facts. Amen? Amen. So the first thing to remember is not everything that you hear out there is true. All right? Now let me give you something else to remember. This craziness that we're dealing with right now, it's going to pass. All right? It will pass. And if that's the case, which it is, we need to trust God in this circumstance and in this situation. And what you're teaching your kids right now by how you're responding to all these things that you're hearing and all these things that you're going through. And your, your children are watching you. I want you to know this. If you're gathering around in your house and you're so full of fear and you're so afraid and you're so worried about everything, you know, your children are watching how you respond to crisis in life. And that is exactly how they're going to respond when they face something in their life. You know, if there's anything I want to pass on to my, to my kids and my grandkids, it, it's not fear. It's, it, it's not, you know, um, uncertainty. It, it, it's a life of faith that, that we can trust God, that we can have good sense. We can get the facts about everything 
and then we can act and, and, and live our lives accordingly. That we don't live in fear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No matter what we go through, because I tell you right now, this is just a harbinger of things to come. This is the last days. In the last days, perilous times are coming. All right? We better learn how to live by faith right now and trust in God Almighty right now. You need to be able to demonstrate that you have a confidence in God regardless of what goes on in your life. Amen. It's very important. And, and so we, we got to quit panicking. We, we got to let, quit letting fear rule the day in our lives and in our families. Now, I think it's important that we do things that are recommended, of course. Do the common sense things like washing your hands. You need to social distance as we're doing here. And when you can't do those things, wear a mask. There's no doubt that's important. But over all of that, we, we got to put our confidence and trust in Almighty God. Peter says this. He says, dear friends, don't be bewildered or surprised when you go through fiery trials ahead. For this is, for this is no strange, unusual thing that is going to happen to you. Jesus said, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. There are going to be things that are unexpected that come upon this world that might blindside us, right, that we're not expecting. I don't think anyone predicted this was going to happen. If you did, I want to talk to you after service. All right. There isn't no one who thought that the entire world was going to shut down, that you wouldn't be able for a season to even meet together in a church. Did you ever think that in a million years that church would ever stop? I mean, come on. Did you ever think you wouldn't be able to go to, go to work or that toilet paper would be a premium? <laughs> I mean, I don't think anybody ever envisioned that in their life. Right? Not here, right. Not here in America. But it happened. And so there are going to be things that are unusual, things that we're not expecting, things that we've never thought of that's going to come to pass here on the earth, that's going to reveal itself here on the planet. In the world, we're going to have tribulation because we live in a fallen world. Sin has broken everything, so we shouldn't be surprised. We shouldn't be shocked when things don't go well here on this planet. I mean, once sin entered this world, nothing in this world works perfectly. Nothing, nothing in this world works like it was supposed to. Everything on this planet is broken, so nothing is going to work perfectly like you and I would like them to. Creation itself, the Bible says, is groaning and travailing, just waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. It's waiting when the sons of God are revealed as to who they truly are and the glory that God placed on the inside of us is going to be coming out on the outside of us sin is going to be gone forever and all of creation is clapping their hands just getting ready for that moment to take place when jesus christ comes and sets up his kingdom here on planet earth man what a beautiful thing but right now the earth is groaning and travailing because sin has ruined everything on the earth. So to overcome this predicament, we have to live by faith right now and trust in God Almighty. And so what I'm saying is it's time for us to choose where we stand. We've got to take our stand upon the truth of God's word. Amen. Amen. In the days ahead, we need to focus on what's not changing instead of all the things that are changing. Because there's a lot of things that are changing right now, so much. But you know what? This stuff is going to pass. And so the key to stability in our life, when everything around, around us seems to be up in the air, is to focus on those things that are not changing, things that will never, ever change. Listen, we don't know where all this is going to end up. I mean, we thought we were coming out of it, and then the governor you know, put a bunch more um, restrictions on us. And, you know, there's a, people are going in and out. I mean, it's going up and down. We, we don't know when we wake up in the morning where things are going to go. So we got to focus on things that never change. That's how you remain stable. That will give you all the stability in this hour that you need. We got to keep reminding ourselves that God sees and that God cares, that nothing's happening, nothing's taking him by surprise. And by the way, just so you know, this isn't the first time social distancing, I mean, it's a new word for us, but this ain't the first time social distancing has been, been heard of. I mean, you go all the way back with the lepers. Remember, they had to have 50 feet, right? They had to social distance, and they had to yell out, unclean, unclean, right? 
You know, this isn't the first time. I mean, it's, all this is new phrases for us, but it's not new. This didn't take God by surprise. God knows all this. I've God sees and, and God cares. And so if we understand that, it will bring stability in our life. And you know what? God has the power to sustain us. I don't care what happens. He does. He will sustain us and he will guide us through this. You know, if we'll follow his wisdom. And listen, one thing we need to keep in mind today is that when God acts, he always acts out of his goodness towards us. God is good. Somebody say amen to that. And how many knows that God's goodness towards you is never going to change? God is good. Every good gift, James says, every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation nor shadow of turning. You know what the scripture says? Every good thing comes from God. Every wonderful thing you've ever experienced in your life came from the hand of God. God's not out to get you. He's out to love you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So no matter what happens in this life, God is always good to you and I, and he is never, ever going to stop loving you. I don't care what a rascal you are. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how undeserving you feel. God is never going to stop loving you. There's nothing you can do to get him to stop loving you. Nothing. Amen? It's never going to change. Paul says this. Paul says this. 2 Timothy chapter 1. For I know whom I have believed. Do you know him? Do you know him today? I know whom I have believed. I know his character. I know his nature. I know what he does. I know what he's promised. I know how he's came through in the past. He says, I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. I am convinced that he's able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. So whatever you give to God, God will keep. Amen. You know, when I was younger, I used to give money to my mom and just have her hold on to it for me because, you know, I know if I kept it, I would spend it. Right. But I know if I gave it to her, it was safe. At least until I asked it back because I had a paper route, you know, and I didn't always spend my money right. Most of the time it was on candy. You couldn't tell. But, uh, um, <laughs> You know, I just would spend money just here and there on stupid stuff. And I'd, I'd give it to my mom, and I knew it was, it was a safe place. It's what Paul's saying. Listen, whatever I give God, I know it's safe. Whatever I put in his hands, you know, I know I can go back there, and it'll be there, and it'll be protected. Right? And so if I commit myself to him, <laughs> amen, if I give all that I am and all that I have to God, guess what? He's able to keep that which I commit to him against that day. Right? Until that day. These are some of the things that, that we need to focus on right now. The things that we need to keep in our thinking. The things that never change. And one of those is God's love. God's love will never change. God's grace over me will never change. God's goodness towards me will never change. God is good. Say that with me out loud. Please let everybody hear it online. All right. God is good. Come on. Let's say it one more time. God is good. Amen. Say it at home. Ready? God is good. Amen. I know you seem weird. You feel weird. Everybody's looking at you weird. But let me tell you right now, God is good. That's a truth you need to put in the bank. Amen. Let me give you something else to remember. We need to remember that no matter what you and I go through in life, that God is going through it with us. You know, God doesn't take a vacation. Aren't you glad? You know, if I was God, I'd need a vacation. <laughs> Just putting up with me would be enough to put me on tranquilizers. You know what I'm saying? Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? I would need a vacation, but you know, check it out. God's dealing with Joni over there. I cannot believe how, it's unbelievable. But you know what? God deals with Travis. I was just, wow, man. I, I just, and, 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 and Don and, and all you guys, you know, God's dealing with all of you and he's not going on vacation. Amen. He didn't go away wall. <laughs> Aren't you glad? God is going through everything with us. Every stage of life, every phase, every crisis, God says, I will go through it with you. God's going with you. And that's comforting to me. You know, you and I are never alone. You know, the Bible says God is. He says, I am. <laughs> oh, man, when the I am says I am, that's, that's some good news. Now, it doesn't mean that you always feel God all the time, but God's with you. He's with you right now. In fact, 
God will never ever be closer than he is right now to you at this very moment. And he will never be further away than he is right now to you at this very moment. I know our feelings change. They vacillate all the time depending on what we're going through in life. Sometimes God feels really close. Sometimes God feels far away. Sometimes it feels like I can just reach out and touch him and just talk to him face to face. And other times he seems like he's a universe away. That's me. That's not God. Emmanuel, God, with us, I, I am. I am is here. And you know what? He said, I will never, ever leave you. I will never, ever forsake you. I'm as close right now as I'll ever be. And I'm as further away, further away than I will ever be at this moment. Isn't that beautiful? I am is here. Why don't you reach out? Why don't you reach out in your room right now? Why don't you reach out in this sanctuary right now and recognize that I am is here. Whatever need you've got right now, whatever fear you're facing right now, whatever concern you have, maybe you're concerned about your family, about your job. Maybe you're concerned about your health. I don't know. But whatever it is, I am is here right this very moment. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. God said through the prophet Isaiah, I love this. He says, when you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. (laughs) When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression... You'll not be burned up. And the flames will not consume you. I want you to notice that God didn't say, I'll keep you from the deep. He didn't say, I'll keep you from difficulty or I'll keep you from the oppression. But he says, I'll go through it with you and none of these things will harm you. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that, you know, in the world you have tribulation. Jesus said, we're going to have tribulation, but you're not alone. I, I'll go with you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Abednego, remember? The furnace heated up seven times. The people that threw them in the furnace actually died throwing them in. And they were bound, right? And the Bible says that the, the things that bound them burn off, but their, 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 their hair on their arms didn't even singe. And when the king looked in, he saw the fourth man. Why? God didn't keep him from the fire. He went through the fire with them and nothing by any means harmed them. Aren't you glad? That's the kind of God that we serve today. Yeah, we go through trouble. We go through trials. We go through pain. But you know what? God says, I'm right there with you. I'm in the boat. (laughs) If you believe Jesus is in the boat with you, I want you to just lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right at home. Come on, lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad that you are with me. I'm so glad that I'm not alone today to face all of these things. I'm so glad I can depend on you, Jesus. I'm so glad that you are a friend that sticks closer than any brother. I'm so glad that your mercy and your grace met me this morning. It's transforming me even now. I give all my care to you right now, Jesus. I give it all to you. Listen, when we believe that and we cast our care upon him, it gives us stability and confidence. It'll help us to replace worry with worship and replace our anxiety with rest and with peace. I want to give you one more. I want you to know that this isn't the end of the story. No matter what you go through, (laughs) the scripture tells us that we win no matter what happens. And the fact is, I want to tell you something. When you came to Christ, Jesus stacked the deck. You can't lose. You can't lose. You, the Bible says you are an overcomer. 
<laughs> Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith, right? Whatever is born of God, are you born of God? God says you've already overcome the world. I stack the deck. You can't lose. Even when God's kids leave this planet, they go straight into the presence of God. I mean, their life on earth may end, but it's not the end of the story. Paul says this. He says, we are confident and yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So listen to me. In order to live with hope in the middle of a crisis, you and I have to change our focus. We have to, you know, shift our perspective. And we got to be willing to look at a bigger picture and see things within the light of eternity. We have to remember that even when we leave this planet, it's not the end of the story. And one day, all of our pain, our sickness, our sorrow, our griefs, our fear, our anxiety, our stress, our sadness, all of that stuff is going to end. John wrote in Revelations 21, he will wipe every tear from their eyes, talking about us. And there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. <laughs> oh, that is good news. So it's not the end of the story. So don't ever forget that. Well, there's a whole lot more I could give you today. But we only have a short time. But I want to give you this last one. I want you to remember that right this very moment, God wants to use you to help other people. You know, God just doesn't want to take you through the crisis. He just doesn't want to protect you, you know, through this crisis. But God actually wants to use you in the midst of this crisis. And I believe that's the difference between how believers and non-believers view pain. Believers see pain and the pain of others as an open door. Every need in our world is an open door. Every pain, every hurt, every habit, every hang up, it's all an open door. And so when we see a need, we feel it. When we see a hurt, we heal it. And right now there's a tremendous need in our community because the public schools in our community are not going to be opening. They're not. And so in the days and months ahead, you know, WBF is going to be starting a lot of brand new ministries. One of which has already begun just this week. We've begun our next step program at Creative Kids for all of those who are the age of kindergarten. And we're going to be having classes beginning on October, I'm sorry, on August the 31st, 2020. So if you have a kid that's kindergarten age and wants to go and you want them to attend school in the classroom because they're actually going to try to distance learn in kindergarten can you imagine a five-year-old trying to watch you know their phone or an ipad to get their education this year can you imagine how effective that's going to be how far behind our kids are going to be it's crazy and so if you want your child to attend class this year for the age of kindergarten, you can do that. We're going to be having it at Creative Kids Campus. And so you better sign up quickly because we mentioned it and we got all kinds of signups already. So if you want to be a part of that, you better sign up quickly and get your kid in there because if you don't, there's not going to be any room and it's going to break my heart, but that's just the way it is. And so call Creative Kids for more information. Talk to Teresa Valenzuela, the director there. By the grace of God, by the beginning of the school year 21-22 uh, school year, we're going to have Creative Kids Campus Elementary up and running, beginning with grade one. Our school will be taking off. This pandemic is opening up the doors for the church, and we're going to push it wide open, and we're going to explore all the opportunities that God is giving us. 
we believe what the enemy has caused, God's going to turn it around and use it for our good. God can bring good out of evil. If we'll just say, use me, God, what, what can I do? What do you will for my life? You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12, 27, it says that together we're the body of Christ. What does that mean? It means together, together. Did you hear that word? Together. We are a powerful force. We are the body of Christ. And each of you are a part of this very awesome body. John says, your strong love for each other will prove to the world. Jesus says that you are my disciples. That love that we have for one another. And so when we gather together to reach out, to love other people, and to help meet the needs of our community, God's love will be clearly seen through all of us. And it will clearly show the Lordship of Jesus. I think it's time to be instruments of change. Amen? Don't you? You know, as I said, God wasn't surprised by this. God's bigger than all of this. We know this last verse, and we know that all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. Now, not everything that's working together is working for everybody's good, but it's working together for our good. If we'll give God all the pieces and trust in him alone. So why don't we do that right now? Why don't we just place our trust in God Almighty? It's so cool to know that God is putting things in place, things... He uses stuff like this to, I don't know, I think to um, speed up time sometimes. And I think this would push us into doing something that we normally wouldn't want to just do on our own. Sometimes you do it because of necessity. Amen. Why don't you stand with me? God is so good. Do you believe God's good? Do you believe God has good intent and good will towards you? Why don't we open up our hearts and just receive from heaven? Those of you at home, open up your hearts. God loves you. He cares for you. He cares for your family. He's opening doors right now for you to step into. Find out what can I do? How can I be a part of the miracle that God is manifesting right now in the world? What, what, can, what can I do to be a part of what God wants to do at this time, at this very moment? I tell you what, if you'll open up your ears and open up your heart, God will share with you exactly what he wants you to do. Whether you might just be given a financial gift, you might be getting involved in a ministry, you might go and help the elderly. I don't know. Whatever God wants you to do, just do that. You'll be glad you did. There's no doubt in my mind. And you know, the Holy Spirit is here. Do you feel God's Spirit? I, I, I feel the Holy Spirit just moving amongst us. I pray in Jesus' name that you feel that at home. The Holy Spirit is here to minister life and peace. Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for moving amongst us, for comforting our hearts, for encouraging us and lifting us up. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that you're anchoring our souls. We thank you that during all the tribulation and all the stress and the fear and the worry that's going on in the world, that you alone are preserving us. That you're working all things for our good. Because you're good. And you love us so very much. I pray the steps that we as a church can take during this time will be steps that are ordained of God. That you will lead us and that you will guide us together as a body, as one body. We are the body of Christ. Use our hands, our feet, our mouths. For your glory, God. I thank you in Jesus' name that as we open up this next step at Creative Kids, I thank you that your blessing will abound upon it. You will protect and you will provide 
I thank you in Jesus' name that everybody that's here today under the sound of my voice is feeling your comfort and your peace and your rest. Thank you, Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, pray with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me. You took all my sins to the grave so that I could be free. You rose again to make me one with you. And so today, I receive you as my personal Savior. Thank you for saving me and removing my past and setting me free. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Is God good or what? Hallelujah. I'm excited about the future, guys. I know a lot of a lot of people are pessimistic, but I tell you right now, I'm excited about what God's doing. This is an opportunity, an open door for us. So we're going to step in it in Jesus' name. Like I said, if you want to be a part of that, if you have a child that's kindergarten age, you better get on it right now because it's a short little window here uh, before we'll, our classes will be full. So anyhow, God bless you. We thank you for tuning in today. We thank you guys for all coming today in person. We invite you to come. Like George said, it is safe here. We're practicing social distancing. We're not hanging out in the foyer. We're going outside. So um, this is safer than it is at Lowe's or at Home Depot or at Walmart or any other place that you go. We're actually social distancing here. So you, you can be safe here. All right. And if you have medical problems, we understand, stay home. That's fine. That's why we're doing this online. But if you can come, please come in Jesus' name. We'll see you next week, all right? God bless you. God bless you guys. Bye-bye, guys.